You have to keep moving. How about you go in the window? No, we can't stay there. Hi there, Michelle here, also known as Fancy Dice or Tea Party, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to make this flower granny square bandana. Okay, first off the bat, you'll probably be like, Michelle, didn't you already make this video? Yes, yes, I did make this video, but I wanna to touch upon the fact that that video was my very first crochet tutorial video that I had ever made. Also, it is my most popular video on YouTube. How do I put this? The first video, although it was very informative, I feel and I felt like uh, you know I, I, I made it a tutorial it could have been better it could have been a lot better it also could have not been upside down while I was filming it the way the filming setup was it was kind of awkward to shoot and I ended up describing what I was doing while looking into the camera so then when I was editing it if I had like rotated the clip around all my directions would have been in reverse it, it was it was this one this is the tutorial that i taught y'all how to do and you know what a lot of y'all did really good on it you, you've watched it you said it was a good tutorial you always tag me when you guys make one and i am really happy about that like if you make something for my channel tag me on instagram i would love to see it i love to see like your version because your version's probably a different color scheme than mine and i'd love to see it but anyways i just thought that I owed it to not only my subscribers but also myself to redo this video and redo it right. I do want to point out that everything that you are going to need and everything that I use to make this bandana, all the information that I know of, that I have knowledge for, is either in the video or in the description below. So let me just take this off so that way you can see it. This is the one, as you can see, it matches what I'm wearing. This is my new color scheme. I really like this. And then this is the one that I did last last year. Yeah, there's some parts that I still haven't tied in. Now, here's the thing. They're essentially the same. I just changed it up a little bit because, hey, you know what? It's been a year. I have improved on my crocheting so much that I was able to figure out things that didn't work back then, but work for me now, or had worked for me back then, but don't work for me now. And I've, I've changed it, such as I changed the way how to attach the granny squares. I did a little extra thing on the border and then I did a little extra right here, which I did not do on here. Also, the ties, they don't need to be as long as you think they do. I normally don't redo my videos. Like once my crochet project is out there, it's out there. But I did get like a few comments being like, I couldn't understand what she was doing. It's upside down, yada, yada, yada. I'm not, I'm not doing it for the haters. I would like future people who are gonna follow my channel to have a better video. First up, I do wanna say that if you are wondering about what yarn to use, Use, the thinner and softer the yarn the better now this is the yarn that I did last year and you can kind of see that it does have that softness to it you know it's more flexible so the softer and thinner the yarn the more flexible your bandana is gonna be and then the more thicker the yarn the more rigid the yarn is the less flexible it'll be but again like I, I gotta I gotta say this it is yarn and yarn will eventually stretch out and become more flexible keep that in mind when you do buy your yarn like I do like how this one sits on my head and I feel like with time it will weigh itself down and you know gravity do its thing this yarn here this was some soft yarn and I will link the yarn that I used on this one so like I said there are a few little differences between this bandana and my first one and I will cover those in the video so I think that's pretty much all I can say. So let's get right into the measurements of this bandana and then I'll show you how to make the bandana. All right, here are the measurements for this project. So one square is going to be a perfect square. So all the sides are gonna be three inches or seven centimeters. The bottom part of the bandana is going to be 21 inches or 53 centimeters. And then along the side of the bandana, it's going to be 16 inches or 40 centimeters. The height of the bandana without the trim that I'm gonna add is going to be 10.5 inches or 27 centimeters. Now, if you want to make your bandana bigger, I would suggest to add a row. And that will mean that you will have to make five more full squares and one more half square. If you wanna make your bandana smaller, I would take away one row. So you would be making four less full squares and one less half square. 
The brand of yarn that I am using for this project is Patons Astra. I hope I'm saying that right. It is a light three weight yarn and it requires a four millimeter or a US G6 crochet hook. In each one of these, there is 50 grams of yarn and I will not be using that much. I'll probably use half of this, not even half of this for this project, for like the orange part of the coloring. The colors I will be using, hot orange, deep pink, and school bus yellow. I honestly love the names of these yarns. They're just so cute. Along with the three colors that I'll be using, I am gonna be using a four millimeter crochet hook, which is a USG six and a pair of scissors. This is the square that I'll be working on today. I have to still, you know, fix up a little bit of the ends and everything, but this is what I'm making today. This project actually does not take a really long time. Not only will I be showing you how to make the regular square, I will be showing you how to make the half square. Being quite honest, the half square is a hundred times easier than this one. Don't let this one fool you. Do not let this one trick you into thinking that this is very, very complicated. It's literally half the steps of this one. I'm gonna start off with my middle color, which is this yellow, and I will be making a magic circle or a magic loop. I'm going to drape the yarn over my hand. So this is the tail end, I'm draping the tail end, and the working yarn is connected to the ball of yarn, which is across my room at the moment because it uh, it fell away from me and uh, kept rolling and I'm too lazy to go get it. Anyways, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the tail end, pinch it right here. I'm gonna wrap it around these three fingers and leave this pinky free wrapping it. And then I'm gonna take this part part of the working yarn and I'm gonna make an X. So we're here, we're twisting, we're making an X. All right, so you see we're here, we're twisting, making an X. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to make that X and pinch that yarn with my pinky finger. Now that this is done, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crochet hook, I'm going to go underneath the first line, so the very first string here, so we'll call this string one, we'll call this string two, cause string two is going over top of string one. Going under string one, and then I'm going to take my hook, little hook here, right here, and I'm going to grab string two and I'm going to pull it through. Okay, let's do that again. So we're going under and then we're going to take that other string and we're going to pull it through. And then once we're through, we're just going to spin. Okay, so we're here, we're spinning. And then what I'm going to do is the working yarn, which is yarn two, so the one right here with my pinky, I'm going to go back underneath it and then I'm going to pull this loop through this loop here. Okay, and then you can let your fingers go. All right, we've started the loop. Depending on your project, I'm doing eight petals. I will be making eight single crochets in the middle of here. But if you're gonna be doing less or if you're gonna be doing more petals, you're either gonna make more stitches or you're gonna make less stitches. Now I have to make eight single crochets within this loop. The first one, what I'm gonna do is, cause these are just single crochets, I'm gonna go into my magic loop. I'm gonna make sure the magic loop itself is draped over my crochet hook. And I'm also gonna make sure that the tail end is also draped over. One of the main key components of making a good magic circle is to make sure that the tail end is always draped over because what ends up happening at the end is to close the circle, you're gonna have to pull on this tail. And if it is not weaved in or crocheted over for all your little stitches here, your magic circle is not gonna be very magical. Let's continue going into my magic circle. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull through my magic circle. I'm going to yarn over. I'm gonna pull through two. I need to do eight. So again, into the magic circle, yarn over, back out of the magic circle, yarn over, pull through. Eight. Now it's time to close up this magic circle and to do so, remember that piece of tail yarn right here? First, I'm gonna make sure that this is nice and flat because sometimes when you pull it, it likes to twist on itself. Pull, just like that. Keep pulling, making sure everything is nice and flat. Keep pulling, keep pulling. There. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my crochet hook and in that very first stitch right here, I'm going to insert into both those top loops like I would a regular crochet. I'm gonna yarn over and now I'm gonna be doing a slip stitch. So yarning over, I'm gonna pull through all these loops just like that. Then I'm gonna take my scissors. I'm gonna cut my working yarn. I'm going to yarn over 
using that same piece that I cut. The other one is just like hanging out back there. I'm gonna yarn over, I'm going to pull through, and I'm gonna continue pulling until it's off my needle. Then I'm gonna just pull gently. That's the middle part. That's it. Now we can work on the petals. Grab your petal color. My color is this pink color. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be making myself a slip knot. So for this, I'm going to hold with my right hand. I'm going to just drape the working yarn over my left hand. Then with these little fingers here on my right hand, I'm gonna grab that working yarn. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. We got the tail, we got the working yarn, the working yarn goes that way, the working yarn goes all the way to the ball. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to twist. Okay, so I'm just using my left hand, twisting. Then I'm gonna put my fingers through, okay, like that. I'm going to grab that working yarn, just like this, I'm gonna pull through. It, it kinda looks like an A. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, with these fingers, I'm gonna grab that working yarn again, and I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna put my crochet hook through, and then I'm gonna pull till it's tight. Now I know this uh, version of a slip knot might have been a little bit over dramatic. I don't need this much of a tail, but I feel like the more over the dramatic, the more easier it is to follow the steps in a tutorial. Now we're going to add the petals onto here. To do this part, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure first that there's eight petals, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, great. I'm going to insert my hook right before all these pieces of yarn start because I need to hide those into my work. You see how there's two loops right Right here I'm gonna put my crochet hook through both those loops now the first petal or cluster is gonna be ever so slightly different than the rest of them because we just need to build that height up and then we can start working on the other ones I'm going to make myself a slip stitch so I'm going to yarn over I'm going to pinch this yellow here this pink here and make sure that this is going to loop into my hook like that and then I'm gonna pull through and then I like to just pull tightly now I'm going to chain three. To chain, I'm yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through. Three chains. Then I'm going to yarn over, and in that very same stitch that I did these chains, I'm gonna insert my hook, I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to pull through, I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to pull through two. That's where I'm stopping for a second because it is a cluster, so I'm not gonna yarn over and pull through these two until I have all the little stitches here to make a full petal. One more time going to yarn over, going to insert into that same stitch. I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to pull through, yarn over, pull through two stitches. So now that you can kind of see I have three stitches here, I am now going to yarn over and pull through all three. Now this is where it differs because usually I will wait until I have four loops on my hook to do so, but because this chain counts as one of those stitches, there's only gonna be three loops for the very first petal. Now I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna pull through all three of these stitches. Okay, and that's your first petal. Now I'm going to chain two. One, two. I'm going to yarn over and now I'm gonna go into the next stitch. But what I'm gonna do now is I wanna hide all of these tails. When I go into the next stitch, which is right here, I'm gonna go in I'm going to make sure that all the yarn that I want to hide is looped over my hook as well. So now I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through the two chains there, the pink yarn and a little bit of that yellow yarn there. Okay, I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to pull through two. Now this is technically kind of like a double crochet, except I'm not yarning over and pulling through two more. So if you know how to do a double crochet, clusters will come really easily to you. Now I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to go back into that same stitch right here. Again, making sure that that pink and that yellow tail is looped over. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull through. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull through two. Remember how this one we had three? I need to have four this time. Yarning over, going back into that same stitch. Yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two. Now I'm here, so now I'm going to yarn over and pull through all four, so yarning over, pulling through all four, chain two. Let's do this one more time. So I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two, stopping, I'm going to yarn over, going into that same stitch, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two. We're gonna do this one more time, yarn over, insert into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through 
two. And now that I have my four loops, I'm going to yarn over and pull through all four of those loops, chain two. So these chains that we're doing in between are so that way when I do the border, the border has a loop to go into. I'm gonna make sure that I do eight. And when I get to the eighth one, I'll show you how I attach the eighth pedal to the first pedal and then we can start working on the border. So I got to my eighth pedal and what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two, one, two, and then right about here I'm going to insert my hook into both of those little loops. I'm going to yarn over and I'm going to be doing a slip stitch. So I'm going to be pulling through all three of these little loops. Then with my scissors I am just going to cut the working yarn, I'm going to do a slip knot, so I'm yarning over and I'm gonna pull through this loop here. And then I'm gonna pull my yarn through and pull tightly. All right, and now onto the last step of making the square, the border. But once again, I am making a slip knot, same way that I did to start off the petal. Insert my hook. And then what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna start right before this tail end. I will be working in between each one of these petals. So those two chains that I did, that's where I will be working it. Right before that tail starts, I'm going to insert my hook and I will be doing a slip stitch. So I'm just gonna yarn over. I'm gonna pinch the orange yarn here. I'm gonna hook that working yarn here and pull through everything. And just pull just gently on the tail end of that yarn. Start off, I'm going to be chaining three. One, two, three. Now for the border, I will be working on double crochet. So this chain is to build height, so it counts as our first double crochet. I'm gonna be doing two more. I'm making sure that I'm gonna try to hide my two ends right here. So to do a double crochet, I'm going to yarn over. I'm gonna go into that very same spot that I did my chain of three. I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to pull through. I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to pull through two. I'm going to yarn over one more time, and I'm gonna pull through the last two loops. I'm gonna do this one more time. Yarn over, insert back into that same spot. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two more. Very similar to the petals on how I'm doing this, except I am looping over the last two instead of leaving them and then looping over all of them at once like the petals. These are gonna be like just little individual ones and not clusters. And then I'm going to chain one. So unlike the petals, I'm only chaining one in between each one of these little clusters here. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into the next one right over here, making sure that the tail ends are still looped over my hook. That way I can, you know, hide them. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Again, same, just a double crochet. One more. This is a corner piece. So this is gonna be the corner, such as right here. Right here is right here. And what I'm gonna be doing is to get that little corner right here, I'm gonna be chaining three. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna yarn over. In that very same space that I did these three double crochets, I'm gonna be doing three more double crochets. So insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So there's gonna be a total of three double crochets. And then I'm going to chain one. Into the next one, I'm going to be doing three double crochets just like here. Now also, if your little tail ends, you've hidden them as good as you're gonna want to, you can always just cut them so that way they're out of your way. I'm going to chain one, and now I'm gonna work on the next corner. So yarning over, three double crochets. Three, chain three, one, two, three. Three more into that very same spot. Then I'm going to chain one and continuing the pattern. So I'm gonna do a middle piece. So right here, another corner, another middle piece, and then another corner. And then when I get to finishing the last corner down here, I'll show you how you finish the border. I just finished that corner. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to chain one. And then right here, I'm going to insert my hook. I'm going to yarn over and I'm gonna do a slip stitch. Cut my working yarn. Hi, 
Hi. You wanna go in that window? You wanna go in the window, Pippin? You can't sit there, Pippin. You have to keep moving. Pippin! How about you go in the window? No, we can't stay there. You're gonna yarn over and you're gonna pull through that loop and keep pulling all the way out and then pull tightly. When you're done with your square, what I like to do is I, I, I made this out of a scrap piece of wood and four nails. All I did was I just put it here, let's say, marked in pencil, then like kind of squared it off a bit so it's a nice square. And then I'll take each corner and I'll pull it over the nail and then I'll press down. And then that way, when you take it off, it turns into a nice, perfect square, just like this. And I even do it with the half squares. So I'll put that there, that there, this here, and push down. What I've done, cause like the nails aren't that long, so I can't fit too many, and sure, I could probably put some nails on the back. The point being is that you probably could just leave, say, whatever fills this up overnight, and then the next day when you work on some more, you can take these off and add the new ones, and they will keep their shape. For instance, this one here I took off a few days ago, so I had to put new ones on, and it stayed its shape. It didn't go back into like a circle. What I'm gonna show you now is how to make this half square. Again, if you followed how I made this square here, this half square is going to be a breeze. Trust me, it is not complicated as you might think. It might look a little, a little serious and a little dangerous. It's not, it's fine. Everything is gonna be fine. All right, starting off with the middle color, we're gonna do a magic circle again. Same steps as the other magic circle that I taught you earlier. The slightest difference is now we're making it half. And by half, we're only gonna do four single crochets into this magic loop. and four, pull tightly. Make sure there's one, two, three, four. Since this is a half square, it does not need to be a full circle. So we're stopping, we're cutting our working yarn, we're taking the yarn that we were just using, the working yarn, we're going to yarn over, we're gonna pull through, we're gonna pull tightly. We have half of a circle, that is what we want. Now onto the petals. These are the same steps as the regular petals for the full square. With my hook, I'm gonna go into that very first stitch right here, just through those two loops, you know, just like how I did the other petals. Gonna yarn over, then I'm gonna do a slip stitch between the yellow yarn and the pink loop there. Gonna chain three, one, two, three and now we can work on the rest of this petal so i'm going to yarn over i'm going to go into that very same stitch that i was just working in i'm going to yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over i'm leaving these two loops here inserting yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and now that i'm done the first petal i am yarning over and i'm pulling all three loops chain two making another petal into the second one these are the same petal steps as the full petal, okay? There is one slightly different, well, it's really an extra step, but that happens at the very end after you've finished all four petals. But all four petals are done the same way as the full square. So now that I finished the fourth petal, this is where that extra step happens. I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, Four, and then I'm going to take my hook and in that very same space that I made this petal, I'm gonna insert my hook and I'm going to do a slip stitch, okay? There we go, cut my yarn, yarn over. I'm going to do a slip knot. So the reason why I did this little extra chain here is so then that way there is a spot to put that little orange border part right here because when you go to the front in the very first petal, there's like this little gap here where that chain is and then those two other little petals. So right there is where I like to start my border and then right here is where I finish the border. Border time. Take your border color. Again, you're going to do a slip knot. Insert your hook, pull through. In this corner right here, so that's that chain that I did to build my height. And then those are the other stitches that I did to make this whole one petal. In between the chain and these stitches here, I'm gonna insert my hook. I'm going to do a slip stitch and I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Now the border is exactly the same as the other border, except I'm doing half of it. This is the full square when I cover my hand. This is what I'm doing for the border. Like right, right here is technically this corner, but we're only gonna do half of this corner. I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna go into that same spot. 
yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're doing the double crochets right now. We're gonna chain our one, all right? We're gonna go into the next spot in between those two petals. We're gonna do three more double crochets. We're gonna chain one. We're gonna do that corner piece now, chain that three in that same spot. Three more double crochets, chain one in this spot here. Three more double crochets, chain one. And now this is where I go into that chain of four gap that I did on my very last petal, because then that way, there's my last petal, there's that chain of four, I can put my hook right through there and do three double crochets. When you're done your double crochet, you're gonna cut your yarn you're gonna yarn over, you're gonna pull through, you're gonna pull tightly. That's the half. Like I suggest, this is the half when I've put it in my little blocking block to make them a perfect square. And then this is what it looks like when I haven't done that. Now this has only been sitting for a day. You can see the shape. So I highly, highly suggest you buy one or you make one. Again, it's just four nails into a piece of wood. It's super simple. And that's why I like to do this and then stretch it and stretch it and pop it down. Now it might look a little overstretched. I mean, this is the final outcome. With all the squares done, I can start attaching them together. Now I did not do the best of hiding my ends, okay? That's why I suggest hide your ends while you go. This is the, the shape and then the half ones are gonna go like here. I do wanna say that there are many different ways to attach your granny squares together. I'm just gonna show you one of the methods. For instance, I will be using my crochet hook in order to do this. You can use a yarn needle if you like. And like I said, there are many different ways on how people attach your granny squares together as long as you like the way they look. This is the way that I like them look. So this is the way that I am going to uh, show you how to do them. But if there's a different way that you like doing, definitely go for that. You know, this is just kind of like a guide of how I got from point A to point B. So if you have a better method or you, you have a personal preference, definitely go for that. You know, I'm going to work from the top to bottom. You want to make sure that all of your squares are facing the right direction and by that I mean you can kind of tell the back this is the back because this is where that string is kind of hanging out so I know that's the back that's the back that's okay that's okay these all look right this is the way that I want to attach them best way to do it is start in your corner it's not like connecting say like four granny squares together because this is a it's kind of off a little bit I wouldn't suggest start here and go there and then here and then here and then move your way over there and there sometimes that can get a little bit complicated what I like to do is I like to start in the corner so we're just gonna separate these for a second what I'll do is I'll stitch from here I'll go down to here and I'll go up to here and then I'll, I'll tie it off and end it. So then say these are all nice and attached together. I'm going to add this one. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna attach it, I'm gonna move this one in here. And then from here, I'm going to attach it this way, back down and then back up. Then once these are all nice attached, I can attach the bottom ones. So what I'll do is I'll go here, 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 and then here. And then the same will happen when I add in the half squares. So let's start off with these. When I'm attaching them, I like to use the same color as the border color. And I'm going to do a slip knot. It's the same slip knot I've been doing this entire video. Insert my hook. Pull tightly. I'm going to hold them together. I'm going to do good side to good side. I have the good sides touching each other just like this. And I'm going to go right into this corner, but not through the corner like this. Not so my needle I can move around. I'm going to go through a stitch in the corner. Okay, so this stitch over here, this stitch over here. Then I'm going to take my yarn. I'm going to yarn over and I'm gonna pull through all three of those little loops on my hook. Turn that around, it's probably easier to go this way. How I attach them is I like doing slip stitches. When I do my slip stitches, I like to make sure that I am going from the outside loop to the outside loop. So if you can kind of see here, you see how there's four loops, okay? So you have your one stitch here, you have your one stitch here, you have one, two, three, four loops. What I like to do is I like to go from the outside loop here 
to the outside loop here, okay? So these two loops that are facing each other, I'm not gonna touch them, I'm not gonna go through them. While I'm in this corner, I'm gonna go through the next stitch, which is right here. That's the outer stitch. Gonna skip that inner stitch on this square. I'm also gonna skip the inner stitch on this square. I'm gonna go to the outer stitch on the other square. Then I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna pinch all three of these loops and pull through. And that's it. So I'm going outside stitch, outside stitch, yarn over, pull through. This is the method of attaching granny squares that I personally like. I've done it for all of my projects. This is the way that I find is one, one of the easier ways to learn how to do it. Also the, the simplest I feel. And of course you can use a yarn needle. Sometimes, you know, you just don't have access to yarn needles. Or in my case, you break two yarn needles in one day and then you don't have yarn needles anymore. And you just go all the way down until you get to the corner here. So this is what it looks like on the good side. I really like how this looks. I like the two lines. So you can kind of see the stitches that I did in between those lines. But I really, I just, I really like how that looks. This is what I like. I like how visually pleasing it is. Now I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be my corner. I mean, technically that could be your corner too, but this is gonna be the peak of my bandana. Now I'm gonna take my next one and I'm gonna put it here. Don't even need to cut my yarn at this point and I'm gonna continue going this way. Good side, good side, flipping over, taking my hook. I'm gonna go right into the corner of my new square and right into the corner of the square that I already have. Yarn over, pull through everything. And again, outer stitch, outer stitch, yarn over, pull through everything. And then when this square is done, I'm gonna show you how to attach the next row. When you get to the very end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my yarn. I'm going to yarn over and pull through. We have the peak of my bandana. So now I'm going to be working on the next row. I'm adding three more right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that good side is facing good side. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna start attaching the new row. Again, I did my slip knot, put my hook through, go right into that corner. And when I mean corners, you know, remember when we had to chain that three? So that's like one, two, three. It'd be that second one, the middle one. Yarn over, pull through everything and same process just going into the outer stitches and just keep going and going and then add your next square. So this is what it's looking like, all right? We're getting the shape. Hopefully everything makes sense. And now I'm going to attach the little half squares. Now with the half squares, I am going to be attaching them the exact same way that I attached these last four. All I'm doing is I am just doing that zigzag method all the way down to the end. So then that way this is nice and flat because that's why I made those half squares. Once these are attached, I will be showing you how to do the border. And then after the border, I'm gonna work on the very front here and the ties. There we have it. The main part this project is now completed. Now here's the thing. I didn't weave in all my ends like I showed you because sometimes I got lazy and I didn't do it. Let's clean this up before we get on to the next step. Anything like this, I can just tie and then I'll cut that. And then certain ones like this orange one right here, what I'll do is I'll just take my hook and just kind of like go through a few little stitches, grab onto that piece and just pull that through. And then I'll cut it. Different ways to hide your ends, either hide it in while you're working, tie it off, knot it and cut it or weave it through. You can also use a yarn needle. Yeah, just clean up this backing and then we will do the sides. I, uh, I cleaned up with what I could, but you know. This is what the outside of it looks like. So this is how it's stitched and how they're attached together. And then on the inside, this is how they are attached. They have a little bit of a border. And the only reason why I didn't cut these and put these away is because when I do my edge, I think I'm just gonna hide a lot of these strands in that edge. So that's why I left that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do the border in the pink color. For the border, it is going to be a scallop 
border. There's a few little steps that I'm doing differently from this tutorial from my first one, mainly because I've learned a lot of things, is I'm actually going to go around and I am just going to do a single crochet in every single one of these stitches, just so that way it's a nice clean edge and then I can start doing my scallop border. I will be making a slip knot. After I do my slip knot, I'm going into the top one right here. I'm just going to yarn over, pull through, and I'm just going to do a slip stitch. Okay, I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull through. I'm making sure that that tail end is I'm trying to hide that. Yarn over, pull through, two. Next stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two. Going into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, two. As you can see right up here, like that's a stitch. So I'm going through both of those little loops that creates a little V. I'm yarning over, I'm pulling through, I'm yarning over, I'm pulling through two. I'm gonna continue doing these single crochets up to the corner and back down here. And then I'm gonna stop here because this right here, I'm actually gonna be doing a orange border. So I'm not gonna be doing pink. I'm only doing scallop on like the triangle part. And then this flat part, I'm just gonna be doing some rows just to clean this up a bit. So go all the way around with your single crochet. And when we get back here, I'll show you the next step. I'm at the end now of doing all my single crochets. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip it over and I am gonna just work on the back side and do all of my scallop border from this side. That way I don't have to cut my yarn. The reason why I did the little bit of a border is this is one that I did last year. I actually did this one right after I made the green one for the video. And so you can see that I did the scallop border right into the square and it looks, it looks okay. So you don't need to do this little extra border if you don't want to. You can just do the scallops right onto the squares. But personally, I wanted to change it up a bit. I really wanted to do a border and then do the scallop. And sometimes it is a little bit easier doing the scallops if you have this border. But I just want to show you what it would look like with and without this little extra single crochet border. All right, so to start off, I'm going to skip this very first crochet right here and I'm going to work into the second one that's right here. I'm going to yarn over, scallop border, all double crochets and a few slip stitches, but mostly double crochets. I'm going to skip that first stitch here, go into this one right here. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. So I have to do five double crochets in the same stitch. So again, yarn over, go into that exact same stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two more. Three more times in that same stitch. So now that we have a little bit of a scallop, what we're going to do is we're going to skip the very next stitch right here and we're going to do a slip stitch in this one. All right, so we're skipping. We're going into the next one. We're yarning over. We're going to pull through this loop and this loop here. Okay, and then we're going to skip the next stitch right here and we're going to do five more double crochets in this stitch here. So we're skipping one and going into the next one. So yarn over, skip into the next one five double crochets. Five, skipping a stitch, slip stitching into the second one there. So skipping this stitch, going into here. So I've yarned over, skip into here, five more double crochets. So you can see the scallop border already starting. And you don't even notice that little single border that I did because it blends so well with the scallops. As you can see, like the other one that I did last year, it's just, it's a little bit thicker, but other than that, it pretty much looks exactly the same if you decide not to put this in or if you decide to put that little border in. Now, you have to go around the entire thing until we get to this corner here. So I'm gonna go all the way down here, turn at the corner and go all the way down here. And I am doing the exact same steps where I'm doing my five double crochets into one stitch. I'm skipping a stitch. I'm doing a slip stitch. I'm skipping another stitch. And then I'm doing five more double crochets in one stitch. That is the pattern for the scallop. It's quite easy, quite straightforward. Continue those steps all the way around. And when we get to the end, we can start working on the tie part and and finishing this edge up. I'm on the last one here, just finished it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go right into this corner of the orange, yarn over, pull through, and just do a nice little slip knot just to secure it down. And then yarn over, pull through tightly. 
the border is now done, so now we can work on uh, making this look somewhat decent. So I'm gonna go back to the orange, do a slip knot, put my hook through, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start on this side and work my way to the left, because that's how I like to crochet. And every single space that I can see, like every like stitch on the side, it might be a little bit difficult to see, I'm gonna do a single crochet. So I'm just gonna do a single crochet and try to go in like every single one of these random stitches. So first I'm gonna do a slip stitch, we go try to hide all the tails and just do single crochets all the way down in any little spot that I think a crochet should go into. So that's what it's gonna look like on the good side. And yes, it look it might look a little bit wonky, but what I'm gonna end up doing is I am gonna do one more row of single crochets. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna keep doing this all the way down until I get to the end. Do your best, again, sometimes when it comes to crocheting, there's not a right or wrong way, more or less where to put it. Just use your best judgment. Also, like all these little things, try to kind of hide them in. I didn't do the best job over here, but I'll try to do my best job here. So just kind of hide these ends in if you were like me and didn't hide your ends in while you were working. But if you did, good job doing better than what I'm doing. Go along this edge and continue doing single crochets, evenly spread them out. And then when we get to the end, I'll show you the final step. All right, so now that I'm at the end, there's still some loose ends that I do have to tie in. That's my bad. I mean, it is a crochet project. You're gonna have to do a little bit of weaving at one point. Now that I'm at the end, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain 20, work my way back, and then I'm gonna do some single crochets on this. Let's chain 20. And to chain, you're just yarning over and pulling through. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Now these don't have to be too long because like the, most of this is gonna go like behind your neck, behind your head as well. This is just really to tie it together. So now that you're at the end of your 20th chain, and again, you can make these as long or as short as you feel comfortable for your fit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work my way back and I'm gonna be doing single crochets. So I'm going to chain one extra one, 21. I'm gonna skip the 21st and I'm gonna go into the 20th one right there. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So just continuing those single crochets. And then when I get back to here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a single crochet in every single stitch that I just did. So like the two stitches right here, so like that one single crochet, I am going to do another single crochet in it. That's why I did that little bit of a border, so then, then this border will look a little bit nicer. So every single stitch that I had just made along the border here, I'm gonna be doing one single crochet into it. And then when I get to the end, I'm gonna chain 20, work my way back, and then tie it off. Now that I made it to the end, I'm going to chain 20. One, two, 21, because you need that extra one to turn around. I'm gonna skip the 21st, go into the 20th, and do single crochets back down until I get to this part right here. Basically the exact same way that I showed you how to do this part here, I'm doing the same to this part. Once I get back to here, I'm gonna do one right here and just do one little slip stitch, cut my yarn, yarn over, pull through, pull tightly, and then I just have to hide that in somewhere. So that is what the border looks like compared to this border here. You see how this one's a little bit thicker? I really like how this one looks more than this. So if, if you'd rather do one row of single crochets, this is what it's gonna look like. And if you wanna do two rows, that's also what it's gonna look like. All I have left to do is just hide in a few more ends, but that is pretty much it for this tutorial. And that is how you make this really cute bandana. I hope everything made sense for you. 
you for one it wasn't upside down this time so hopefully that helped anyone else who needed that I really like these colors like I'm you probably can tell that I'm obsessed with these colors this season hopefully I answered all the questions that you had while making this I hope this video was very informative and you could follow my steps I really do try my best to simplify everything that I'm doing so it's easy to follow if you're a beginner or you've been crocheting for a really long time that will do it for this video again if you are new to my channel like sewing crafting thrifting and crocheting because you're watching this video why not hit that subscribe button you can also follow me on my instagram and my tiktok which is the same fancy dinosaur tea party i think that is it so y'all have a good day now